Good morning and welcome to Presence of Light with Charlie Riverman Bridgeron here on Humanity Healing. As always, it's a joy to be with you on Friday mornings as I awaken to find a message to share with the world. And this morning's message was embracing change. Interesting, those two words were present in my mind as I opened my eyes this morning, embracing change. And it's so important for all of us right now who are uh, experiencing dramatic changes in our lives to bear witness to what is happening around us and what is happening within us. So I offer this chat this morning to each of you who are really in this <clears throat> place of questioning, uh, questioning to as to where we are or what we're doing or how we're expressing ourselves because everything is really changing at a pace that I feel beyond what we have in the past. There's been a quickening, so to speak. So I'm not seeing anybody showing up on the uh, sideline. And if you are, please let me know that you are. Um, yeah, protected. So I don't know if it's not set. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, moderation, I don't know what that means. I'll leave that. Ah, oh, Anita, thank you. Bless you. I, I always love to see you on the sidelines. Thank you for letting me know that you're here. It's important for me to know that I'm, uh, I'm reaching out and people are <clears throat> receiving. Not so much for my ego, because I know the video will go out uh, online, but I love to feel your energy. Uh, knowing that you're there adds to my ability to deepen into my energy. Good morning, Victoria, Dolores, Caress. Thank you all for being here. So embracing change. This is what we're doing. And this is what we're all feeling right now. And each of us are doing it uniquely and individually, as well as a collective whole. So as I started to write my show notes this morning, I was guided to look through all of my past um, talks and just list, look at all the names, all the labels of those talks. And I realized that collectively, they're part of a, a whole sort of visionary board that my guides and teachers have allowed me to bring forth from, from them. Good morning to Iowa. Good morning, Tina. And each one of those talk shows or talks or whatever we want to call them uh, represent a journey of my awakening from past beliefs and past um, teachings that had led me to misunderstanding, if you will. And so all of us right now have to awaken to that point that we are in uh, a deep space of misunderstanding. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not that we did something wrong. It's not something that we failed at. But that's what we're being shown by the world. 
uh, made to believe and made to feel like we, where did we go wrong or um, what's wrong with us and that energy is very destructive it's very destructive in the fact that when we go into that energetic mode what we begin to do is pull ourselves apart we begin to doubt ourselves we begin to mistrust our thoughts or our thinking or our patterns of behavior and this is not healthy this is not healthy for us individually and it's not healthy for us collectively so embracing change is really the process of realization the realization that change is always happening sometimes it's more pronounced than others sometimes it's more visible than others sometimes it's done individually and sometimes it's done collectively but we are always in this moment of change if you think of our bodies, we're born, we're infants, we're a fetus, we're in a womb. We don't even have a consciousness. And then we change into, and are born and into a body and that body is always changing. We're still not fetuses, we're still not little children. As we grow older and you get into your 70s and 80s, your bodies change again. We're always changing. And this is part of the beauty of life, is to change. I often think how bored I would be if I was stuck back where I was in many points in my lifetime with those same thinking patterns, those thought patterns, or beliefs in things that I've come to understand differently. Each one of us are going through this process there's been a quickening if you will and the quickening is really about bringing us to this place of exploring new possibilities what are the new possibilities for us what are the past beliefs and and misunderstandings that we have that are blocking our way to these, to exploring these new possibilities. I want you to think about that. What are the new possibilities that you might like to explore? What might you have to let go of in order to explore those possibilities. So I'm, I'm seeing a large truck trying to fit through this small space or under a bridge. It doesn't fit. And when we try to do that, we create damage. And when we look around right now, we're witnessing damage everywhere in all shapes, forms, sizes, on all levels of existence, whether it be planetary damage, whether it be uh, social damage, whether it be physical damage, whether it be uh, emotional damage. Damage is everywhere. I've just spent a week with doing a water blessing as a guardian. A guardian for a woman who is carrying the water from the source of its beginning down a river to the ocean. And part of that process is we would stop and bless whatever came to us about the damage of the area, the ancestors, what the ancestors suffered what the, the building of dams on that river did to the people of the area 
originally and to those who came into those areas to work in those mills and that um, sort of system of slavery that we have and have had and the destruction of the wilderness. This is what we have, this is what we have called evolution. We have evolved and forgotten that in order to live in wholeness, we have to communicate with all aspects of life. Doesn't matter where we are in the world. Good morning. Bless you in Paris. Bless you in England, uh, Florida. Around the world, we can witness what we have created, not intentionally. The process of awakening to our power and our ability to um, live perhaps better lives was really a wonderful thought. It was really a beneficial movement forward. So we are less liable to be succumbed by the nature around us. Yet if we really look at our big cities or the poor countries around the world, it's still happening. We only changed it for a few. And that suffering is still continuing. That pain is still being enforced. It's stuck, it's stuck there. That's my question. What do we have to let go of to become unstuck? Unstuck from this ideology, from this thinking pattern. We're stuck. We're stuck here, rolling around and around and around. And it's part of our journey right now to embrace change to become unstuck. So whether you're stuck in your own personal familial surroundings, whether you're stuck in your um, process of your occupation or ability to sustain yourself in a healthy manner, it doesn't matter where you are stuck. It doesn't matter where I am stuck. What matters is that we become aware of that. Become aware of that and be willing to bless those dams within ourselves. Because the water is still flowing, it's just been interrupted. How do we tear down those dams or dissolve those dams, if you will. I like that better than tear down. But dissolve those dams within ourselves that are keeping us from evolving. Evolving into who we truly are and what we're truly becoming. So yes, we've always been evolving. And that's not going to stop. As long as there is a planet at Earth in which we are able to sustain life, we will evolve. But by embracing change, by letting go of the fear of change, by letting go of the wanting to hold on to well, I've always done it this way. I don't know how to do it any other way. But letting the water flow through us. 
we're allowing ourselves to once again embrace what's further down the river for us to experience. In the end, we're all going to reach Mother Ocean. This is our journey. We're born as a droplet of water in our mother's womb, which is water. And we travel this long river we call a lifetime. And whether that lifetime is a short river or like the one we just blessed, 178 miles long, that is irrelevant as to what we encounter along that river and finally reach the mouth of that river and return back into Mother Ocean. This is important because our failure to address and change results in what we call stagnation and entropy. We're stuck. We're stuck behind that dam or we're stuck in this pool where we become stagnant or we become, um, we can become poisonous, really quite poisonous to ourselves and to each other. God wants us humans to live in harmony with creation and in harmony with nature. Beautifully said, Doug. Because we are nature. There is no separation between us and nature. If there's no nature, there's no human. It's really shifting into what I would call simplicity. Change frightens us because we imagine it being this convoluted, unsolvable system that somehow has control over us. We have leadership around the world for thousands of years that have planted that seed in our brains and fostered its growth and manifestation to the point where we no longer believe we have any power left. We're powerless. Hmm. The river this week showed me how powerful it remains, no matter how many dams you put on it, no matter what you do to it, no matter how you torture it, how you poison it. You cannot stop the flow. No matter how big the dam, Eventually, it will find a way around it. This is the message of the water. To embrace that, to embrace that all changes. Can be moved around, can be moved over, under. And in that process, return to its natural presence. And we as human beings have a natural presence and a purpose for being here. No matter what faith you are, no matter what belief system you've been taught, what is that purpose? I'm asking you to go inside and ask yourself, what is that purpose? 
can choose not to be immobilized by fear any longer. To not be distressed by your lack of compassion for others, for your lack of compassion for nature, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the process, the natural process of that. It was designed in perfection. It needed no improvement. We needed no improvement. This is the illusion. This is the illusion of the human mind. When it's in its honesty wants to create. And it's beautiful. The mind is a beautiful creative tool. But it's not who we are. Right here in the heart is who we are. And we've forgotten. And the distance from here, from our heart to here, that journey, that little short space has created all that you see that no longer resonates with this. I'm, I'm not trying to lecture. I, I really don't when I like get and when I get in that lectural mode, I, I, I don't like that about myself. And I'm really many times I'm lecturing myself <laughs> and you bear witness to it. So we have these lovely cards of, that show the pictures of the galaxy here on the, the ultraviolet light and its presence, its beautiful presence. In essence, that right here, this uh, there, that's who we are. We are that powerful. The card is faith. And the saying of that is, as I study the stars, I see the great wonders of this universe. But I am guided by a greater vision and I have faith in his or her, if you choose, guidance. His and her are human terms. They're not divine terms. In divinity, that separation is not recognized. And it's not recognized because it has, serves no purpose there. It serves a purpose here in the third dimension for us as humans because it's a part of our ability to create and recreate ourselves but there is no reality that beyond this and that realm and those realms we refer to something completely different And it can't be brought into this dimension. Nor is it ever designed to do that. We, as that greater self, were designed to be here and present. And I want you to think about that. What are you as that larger picture? What are you as that galaxy. Think of this body as a galaxy. And everyone you meet is another galaxy. And we're all part of this universe and this multiverse. We're just in the physical form of a being.
And as planet Earth's alignment with the universe has changed over millions of years, and all life forms on it have changed, so are we changing in alignment with this greater presence and awareness. We create in ways that other species don't. We also repeat patterns that are harmful and selfish. And we do it over and over again. Not consciously aware of what we're doing. And this is the embracing change. What would it be if we became aware of what we were really doing to each other? And what if we decided to not do that anymore? That we didn't have to follow somebody else telling us what to do. What if we started to rely on who we truly are in alignment with something, a part of ourselves that can't be explained? I pulled an angel card this morning and it just came out instead of any particular angel it just said guardian angel who are your guardian angels when we think of guardian angels they're sort of protectors and guides and somehow we must be able to communicate with them or them to communicate with us in order for us to be influenced. If we've shut down the radio frequency to receive or transmit with them, we'll start to believe they don't exist. We'll start to believe that we're alone. We'll start to believe that we're useless, we're helpless. What if the river and the waters of the world had a consciousness and decided they were useless and they were helpless? There's consciousness in everything. So let's look into our hearts as the source of our power, the real power plant of the river that we are, and that it will lead us out of this traumatic time. Let's call on our guardians, whether you look at them as angels, teachers, guides, saints, whatever. Listen, open up the field of transmission to hear them in your heart. Then take that heart message to your head. Not the reverse that we've been doing in the head, then to the heart. No, heart first mind last. The mind governs the body. The heart governs who you truly are. So I have a couple of quotes from Rabindranath Tagore that were presented, one was presented by this message and uh, from uh, Kimberly Maroney and her cards. And the quote is, I believe we are free within limits and there is an unseen hand, a guiding angel that somehow like a submerged propeller drives us on. So look for that propeller in you. And another quote from him is, or part of a quote is, let us unite 
not in spite of our differences, but through them. For differences, for differences can never be wiped away, and life would be so much the poorer without them. Let all human races keep their own personalities and yet come together, not in a uniformity that is dead, but in a unity that is living. This is what embracing change for me brought up this morning. Is how do we embrace that greater change? That change or that shifting from here to here. How do we listen here? There's no ears here. There's no mouth here. Yet it's a receiver and a transmitter. And as what I call the divine beings we truly are, this is home. This physical body and the world around us is where we're dwelling in this moment. And we have power over that moment. Not power to control others, but power to appreciate each other for our uniqueness. The trees don't fight with each other. The blades of grass in the yard don't fight with each other. They don't hate each other. They don't need anybody to govern them or rule them. Yes, there's tragedy, there's all the same aspects of life in nature that we go through. Yet none of them, none of what we go through diminishes or shuts down who we truly are. All it does is it buries us deep in a pile of rubble, the weight of which has become unbearable. So listen for the guardian beings that don't need language to communicate. For it's their purpose to guide us now and it's our purpose to follow. And in following, it's not a giving up of our power. It's joining together in focus in a direction that is beneficial to all of life, not just human life, the plants, the fish, the birds, the bugs, the snakes, all beings that dwell here on Mother Earth. Let us be the change that we have been waiting for and honor who we indeed are. Bless you all for being here. Bless you all for showing up and listening um, with open hearts and open minds. And even if things that I've said um, have disturbed you or create a conflict within you, Know that those disturbances and those conflicts are exactly there for a reason. They're for you to look deeper at that conflict. It's for you to look deeper into that unsettling feeling from your heart. From your heart. Bless you all. I love you all. Mm. Bless you in Colorado.
bless you victoria bless you for all of your light bless you for all of your breath bless you for all of your presence here without you i wouldn't be here as i speak to you i speak to me as i speak to me i speak to everything we're all connected and that's the change we need to embrace is that change of consciousness and I'll end with a quote from Greg Braden on healing your spontaneous healing of your beliefs and it's belief code number 28 we tend to experience in life what we identify within our beliefs change your belief everything changes around you you are powerful beings I love you I thank you. I respect you. I am you. You are me. Together, we are unity. May you all have a beautiful and abundant week. May the light within you reflect upon this morning's talk and just brighten you ever so much a little bit so as not to overwhelm you but enough for you to see that you are important in this time of change we'll see you next week or somewhere on the internet and blessings of peace, light, and love to each and every one of you. From my heart to yours. Toodaloo. See you later. Bye-bye.